Hello everybody, this is Bulldozer Investing. Today is May 1st, 2021. It is 3.44.54 p.m. Sorry about that. So I'm recording this Saturday instead of Friday. I did have some uh, personal matters yesterday, so I'll post the video on Saturday. Um, besides that, uh, we have a long list today that we have to cover, but before I do start my analysis, I'd like to also give this little cool uh, tip. Uh, when you're watching the video, um, it's better to watch it on the actual YouTube channel because you can actually click on the uh, video description and see these bookmarks. Uh, I'm going to probably cover more than you know 25 uh, different tickers today. Uh, a lot of requests that are coming from Twitter. So it's better for you guys to just click on the bookmarks and go to the ones that you're interested in. Or you can just watch the whole entire, I don't know how long it's going to last, but maybe two hours, one and a half hour video. Um, that's, that's your choice. Now, the second thing is we do have... Um, a Twitter account that I, you know, every Friday that I post here and people request. So I don't re review these stocks because I'm interested in. I'm reviewing them because uh, they're being requested. That's why I review so many stocks. It's it's not because I want to, like, get more clicks. It's because people request. So I, you know, go ahead and uh, cover them. And the last thing is also uh, another advantage of uh, following us on Twitter is because I, you know, go ahead and post uh, useful charts. These are not buying, uh, um, you know, these are not buy signals or anything, just giving you guys like potential targets on certain names that I feel like it's interesting. Like this one, we said Novavax will hit 240, 260, and within a couple of days, there it hit. Um, we also had uh, people ask me about, you know, Tesla. I you know, post that. Along, along with that, you know, there you can find other ones like, you know, I've mentioned here that um, GME would hit 185, 197, and then, you know, four days later, there you go. You can clearly see that um, GME did reach that target. So um, I talked the talk, but I walked the walk. Um, the, again, by no means these are these are not buy or sell signals. I don't have any type of uh, you know uh, subscription anything. I just find charts interesting and I post them and I do a video analysis just on the sake to help people. That's all it is. Okay. So let's go ahead and start. Uh, let's not waste any more time. First up is VIX. So let's take a look at what VIX has been doing since we had labeled this uh, um, blue line that I thought was going to be a support. It didn't even get there uh, yet, but at least um, we did say that where it was supposed to have a resistance. Oh, sorry about this. Where it was supposed to have a resistance, and the resistance is following up. But I do think VIX looks bullish. Uh, the last couple of days, the Thursday and Friday actions, after such a great, Great results from all over the board, Microsoft, Facebook, Tesla, not Tesla, but um, Amazon, I meant to say, Apple especially, uh, astonishing, uh, astonishing results. Uh, it's just, I, I don't know what's going on uh, with, I, I guess, like, you know, you, you sell it, you know, this is what it is. You buy it when there's blood, you sell when everybody's celebrating. So here you go, you know, this is a bullish uh, crossover on the daily averages of 90 and 9 and 20. Um, it did break and close above the 161 uh, retracement ex or extension on the downside. I feel like the greatest uh, you know, resistance at this uh, next week was going to be 20 for VIX, 2020, 2013, around there. Uh, or maybe you can just simply uh, say the 50-day moving average will be a resistance, which is around 2020. So that's what it is, 2030, actually. That's what it is. Um, VIX does look like it wants to push towards the 50-day moving average at $20.30. Next up is SPY. So let's go ahead and take a look at SPY. Um, again, a lot of people, I, I just can't stand these people that, you know, they've been calling for, you know, bear, bear scenarios, bear scenarios for eight straight years. And these people are still not tired yet saying market is going to crash, market is going to crash. Market will crash when it crashes. We can't guess. Um, but what we can do is statistically just look at, you know, things that we think that there might be some type of, nobody can guess the crash, but, you know, we can, we can take an estimate or a guess of when the market will pull back a little. Crashes don't come in expected uh, time frame. That's why we call it a crash, right? It's kind of like a car accident. You don't know when it's going to come. Now, you can drive stupid and crazy and get into an accident. That's one thing. But um, usually crashes come when, you know, you don't expect them. Like the corona, coronavirus, right? It was a flash crash and it was a V-shaped recovery. 
Um, anyhow, um, we did get a huge support, as I thought, and as I said I, last week, last couple of weeks, on the four ten, uh, four tens. Um, nine day. This is again a lot of people got freaked out. Even though VIX does look bullish for next week, um, by no means the last four days we had red candles, especially on that spike to four twenty and came back. Uh, we got a support at nine day. Now, if nine day breaks down, we're gonna see four thirteen seventy nine. If that breaks down, uh, there's a 20-day moving average support at 411. I think that next week we're just going to go back to and retest 420. Now, would that take a whole week or would that take a Monday retest and come back? I don't know. But um, I'll tell you a couple scenarios in my head. Of course, this is just a guessing game, but it's a guessing more of like an experience guessing game. When you have experience, you can tell how the market kind of trends. I'm not talking about the Elliott Wave theory, but... Just in general, you know, you don't you don't need to be an Elliott Wave theory specialist to guess how the market is going to do. Um, especially, you know, there, you know, you can clearly see why am I not? Oh, I'm highlighting. That's why. Um, you can clearly see. Let me just delete certain things here. Okay. All right. So let's do yellow colors. Fine. All right. So you can clearly see there's a support line right here, which ends up at the 90 moving average. If it drops, you don't have to be very intelligent. Here is the top, bottom, top, the candle, the candle top here besides the Vickers here. Um, so you can see that this range here could be a next support level, which is 413.79. And then obviously we get a huge support at 4, 410. And also the box that I drew, it was probably a measurement that I did. But you can also expect this box as a next support level. But I'd say 413.79 would be a low for next week. Worst case, it will go back and revisit and retest 410.61. Now, don't don't think like the market just moves straight up. Okay, so it might we might get a retest right around this 20-day moving average right here, and then slowly come back, where we can just slowly drop the whole week and then retest 410, which is another trend line here. Um, I don't know where it's coming from, but it's definitely a channel line, the bottom channel line, and then come back for another run. Markets will not look healthy if you just climb up, you know, 1% every day. Um, that's what it is. So month of April was 5% on SPY. That's huge. And now let's take a look, you know. A lot of people thought it was the end of the world. I saw, you know, the bearish uh, Twitter handles, you know, posting that we're dropping the 200s, 180s uh, on SPY. And when we were down at 371, I said, let's just wait. Let's see how in the week, you know, there's a huge recovery here. Let's just wait and see. Let's retest, you know, the cloud top a couple times. Let's look to see if, you know, this is a healthy pullback, which it was. And as soon as we hit the second one, I said, there you go. It's a bounce. Uh, it's a green candle. We're going to go ahead and have a tremendous run towards 410. I, I told you guys that. So that's what it is. Um, and it's a market that will, you know, go obviously go retest some, you know, levels that it needs to. Maybe, you know, I wouldn't even be surprised if we would test this gap which is around uh, 403 to 400. So would it shock me? Not really. I mean, th again, this is all expected game. You don't move straight up. But overall, we are still in a bullish market. It, it's it's a, a bullish trend. And as I mentioned that we're going to test 427 during summer, uh, when I said that, we were right here, obviously. But um, now that you, know, you can say $7 is nothing, but when I said that, we were at 390s. So 427 is my target for SPY, and then we'll see. And then I, I'm going to reevaluate my bullish thesis in the short term. Okay? Next up is NASDAQ. So let's take a look at QQQ. Uh, wow. So I think, and this is like, again, a W with a flag. I think um, NASDAQ, even though that a lot of people are shocked, you know, after such a stellar earnings, you know, we have the big tech companies, you know, putting out great earnings. Uh, I mean, besides tw Twitter was more of like, you know, the social media stocks, um, people don't evaluate them as of, you know, how much they make money, but most most of it is monthly, uh, you know, average users um, and activities. Uh, so that's what counts. So you can make a good earnings uh, on that quarter, but if your monthly activities are dropping down, uh, it's a future looking market. So then it's going to go ahead and drop. So I, I didn't really read what happened with Twitter, but we'll go ahead and evaluate the chart today for Twitter anyways. So going back to QQQ, um, great support on the 20-day. Now, it doesn't mean that it would hold or not. I don't know. 
but it can come down as far as 328. I don't think it will. It will just revisit 335 and move up. My target is 352 and by year end 364. My, my guess is that, again, I'm saying my guess because I never, ever tell you guys this is what's going to happen. We're not God. We don't know what's going to happen for sure. We can guess, right? Either it's going to be like this and then come back and struggle and come back. That's one scenario. The second scenario is that it'll just, you know, it'll just stick here for another time and then just do a whole base flag. And then you see that the width of this base is going to go the next target, which is this one. I'm, I'm not doing like perfect measurements. I, I could if I want to, but I have like 26 tickers that I have to review. I can't spend so much time for one. Uh, so I think it's going to, and as soon as it breaks out this range, it's going to visit 352. Uh, but uh, let's take a look at it this week. It might have like false breakdown here as well. So you see like right under 335 taking some stop losses and then continuing. But overall, I think this is a bullish, uh, you know, QQQ looks bullish. Um, by no means that it's bearish. It's just trying to test the previous top from uh, the February, February pullback right here. Um, so it's totally normal. I think it's going to retest these levels and then go up. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised if it goes back to 3:30 and goes up. So that's you know, that's that's you know another option there. But I think it's going to be in the range of 3:40 to 3:35 and then move up. All right. Next up is Dow. So let's take a look at Dow. Um, it is moving in the channel that we did draw. I think we're expecting, and and in fact, it looks. I'm going to change this drawing. This looks bullish. Um, I would say that I wouldn't be surprised if we see GE, which I'm going to re is it on the list? No, GE is not on the list. Um, I think that GE and, you know, Boeing, I think they're going to have a second run. Um, this looks foolish. Again, it's a pennant. Um, we will have another doubt. So most likely if tech is selling again, uh, we're probably going to see a rotation towards Dow, and it's going to try to test uh, 343. Um, this is definitely bullish. It looks bullish, and Dow is going to probably, and the resistance for Dow is uh, the 9-day moving average, which is 339.59, uh, about like 50, give or take like 60 cents above. Um, so we'll see how that goes, but I think we're going to test 343. Definitely a bullish chart here. Next up is Russell, so let's take a look. Um, not looking that bad. Obviously, like there are companies like Envis and uh, other companies that I think we're going to review Envis chart today. It was requested. It went up like 100% in two weeks, so it was a pullback. Um, you know, you're looking at Russell moving from 215 to to like 15 bucks basically, and let's just zoom in this chart just zooming in because people watch it in small phones and so forth so it's better for them as you can see this 50 percent retracement it did hit which is nearly 224.65 so i want to see if 224.65 or at least 224.50s hold if not it's going to go to 223.22 which is your 50-day moving average now you're going to say why did you skip um the 20 is because I think that these tops right here, so one, two, three, four, the bottoms here, the top of this candle, it makes better sense that 50-day moving average would be the better uh, option for the support. Um, but it can, it, there's two res two supports, 223, and then, well, the first level is 224.65. You're looking at 223.26, and then you're looking at 221.34. So those are all the critical levels for support. Resistance is, as we said, this orange line before was 226, 226, 27. You know, around 226, 227. Let's just delete that. Right around here is fine. Um, that's where I'm going to watch. I don't expect any huge moves from Russell this week, especially going into May. You know, um, you know, people tend to sell May, in May and then come back around, you know, June, July. I don't know if it's going to follow the trend this year. Uh, but what I can tell you is that we do consistently see 
higher lows. Now, if this is the next higher low, then the 233 will be my target end of May. Okay, that's um, because Russell finished the month negative. Actually, where what is this? Uh, every block is not a month. Let's take a look at April right around here. So Russell basically closed almost even uh, for the whole month. So I think for the month of May, we're, we're going to retest 233. Um, and for this week, it will just be good if we can hold 224 and slowly go up. I don't like V-shaped recoveries. I rather like these uh, higher lows and then, you know, um, going up in a healthier chart or going up to make a healthier chart. So next up is Apple. And from here on, we, we reviewed all the indexes. So I'm going to try to be as fast as I can because I do have a bunch and bunch of requests today. And I want to finish this under an hour. So let's go ahead and start Apple. Um, unfortunately, the earnings were great, above well, well above expectations. Um, I'm here. I'm looking at stochastics, surprisingly bearish. RSI lost momentum. MACD is on a crossover and a bearish crossover, and I do see this red uh, bar on the uh, MACD. So as you can see, this is a bearish crossover. Um, and I'm kind of not surprised at all because what did I tell you guys? You look at my Apple um, video analysis. I said that if Apple goes up before earnings, the trend is that it will go down after earnings. Right? I, I've told you guys that. And that's why I said I will rather have not Apple go up as, you know, we were talking about it in these weeks right here, this, uh, you know, beginning of April or the middle of April. And I said I will rather not have Apple go up before earnings. Now, will this chart, does this chart look very similar to NASDAQ? Yes, it's, it's like a carbon copy. Um, you have the W and then you have the flag. Uh, the only thing is that Apple did lose its, uh, you know, 20 and 9 day. Whereas QQQ is still above the 20. Um, there's a huge support at 130.39. I think that's where it's going to test uh, the cloud top. Remember I said when you first break above the cloud, it's always that you get retested. So right here, you know, you break above the cloud, you go up and you're like, okay, we're just going to keep on going up. And then bam, you retest. So this candle right here, the engulf bullish engulfing, and then there's like a little shooting star here. So I, I, I'm expecting something like that, and that would be the bullish case. If not, I am looking at this W top right here, which is 127. Give or take, the 50-day is right around 126. So 127 is, is, should be fine. Um, if that comes to that, if it hits 127, I'm, I will probably buy calls. And I did buy 140 calls three weeks out. Um, I don't know what makes it three weeks out. I, I, I forgot the expression. That I didn't buy, like, it was so cheap. I, it was, I bought, like, $200 worth. It wasn't really something that I even remember. It doesn't really make me nervous or worried about, I, what am I going to follow, $200 option. It was just for, I, I think that this drop, what I think was that it's going to bounce off of 130, which is this scenario. And when it does, it goes nuts. Look at this one, two, three, the third day, fourth. And then bam, you know, further out. So I, I am expecting the reason why I bought 140 calls is because I would probably sell them at 136. Um, but if this cloud bounce does work, every time it bounces within two weeks, look at this from 121 to 138. So that's about 18 points. Uh, you're talking 130. It could even go towards 147, which is all this resistance load. Sorry, 144, 147. But again, it, it has to hold 130. That's my critical area. If it doesn't hold 130, then um, I'm probably going to wait for the option to go really, really cheap, like maybe five cents or something. And then I'll probably cost average, um, double double it up, maybe put another $200 and then just wait if it expires. It's, it's, it expires. It's okay. Because I, you know, I'm not going to put like 50K on Apple just to make, you know, one, one, you know, $1,000, $2,000. I'll just put four, you know, what I'm willing to lose is like $400 on this trade. So I'll just put, you know, around $400 or so, so that, you know, if it goes, it goes, I'd rather use my money on something else. But if I'm going to make $1,000, $2,000 off of Apple, I'll just you know, buy the option. So, but again, it, it was like, it, it wasn't, I, I'm not really hoping a lot from that play because, you know, the MACD stochastics, everything is bearish. 
out of selling volume here. Um, but I do think the bounce, if it does happen and it works out, we're going to go directly right above 136. AMD, so let's take a look at AMD. Um, there is a cloud bottom support, which is not that bad. Um, AMD does have this rounding bottom, which is good. So this is a slow recovery. Um, but however, the 50-day moving average has to hold. The 8120s have to hold. And then uh, it's probably going to retest 8476. So let's go ahead and uh, make this chart a little more easier to read. And I'm going to take a quick snapshot. I, I think it's in the divergence of um, you know recovering. Uh, it's just that a lot of people reacted or a lot of people thought the earnings reaction would have been a lot different. Uh, I mean, I'm not lying. I thought it was going to you know, be a lot different as well. But you see this rounding bottom and the cloud bottom and this, you know, this little trend line that I can't draw straight. But um, here you go. This 8120, 8160 has to hold. If not, it can retest all of this cloud bottom areas right here, which does make sense. There's a gap here and there's also a bunch of support here. So if it does come down slowly and eat your patients away uh, around $80, that's totally fine because it's going to shoot back up towards the $84 area. So this cloud, the, the width of this cloud should be your price action. Okay, It, it would probably go like this. Until, and I like this, you know, higher low, but if it does lose 8160, then, you know, your, your action your uh, bullish or recovery mode is going to slow down a little because my the whole point was to have this you know trend right here. This or th let me do this this orange line that I drew here, this right here. Okay, so if it doesn't hold and you know the 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 fifty day doesn't hold, then I would be I would aim for you know seventy nine eighty dollar and then I'll you know buy from there. Um, other than that, it you know. You can draw a channel here and say if it does bounce, your next target, and you, we don't draw these yellow boxes for no reason, right? Um, so that did work out. That play did work out. Um, I don't know when I did this last video for AMD, but I obviously where, where our target was, that's where it went. Um, I think it's still going to, if it does bounce back, $89 should be your target. But I'm all on the 8162 level support. Or maybe 8150 to make it even. Next up is apps. So let's take a look at apps. Oh, I'm not typing. Okay. Apps. Digital turbine. Now, I like the support on the 100 day moving average. Stochastics is recovering. RSI picked up. MACD is still, you know, being, you know, following up it's it's not bearish i think it's it, it doesn't it didn't do this bearish crossing yet i mean the bullish crossing yet but it is on the verge of doing it so let's see if it does work out um and see how that plays but um the chart itself resistance seven 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 twenty six right dead spot on twice three times on this extension and you're looking at the support at 100 day which is around 70. Um, I don't like the fact that it formed red cloud and it's under the cloud. Um, if you're in this, be patient, and I would do a tight stop loss around 70. So if it does, or actually this, what is this, 68.51. So if you're willing to lose 75 around, you know, um, eight $8, what is it? seven dollars if you're willing to lose about seven dollars on this trade you can put that stop loss or you can even put it on the next uh, 65 dollars so that's 10 bucks um that's you know that's your choice or just leave and wait till it breaks above the cloud uh for now this is a tight training range trading range um i can does it allow me to draw a box here yeah so this will be your trading range you don't want to lose this trading range. So rather you put it on 68 or a little above right here, um, right around here where the 100 day, you know, where 68.51 is, that's your choice. But I, I wouldn't get in this trade yet if it's a swing trade. 
if you're in it for long term, um, I still would be cautious. Not a bearish chart at all. It's just that uh, from February to, till to next this two months, it didn't break above ninety one forty two. It's concerning that it's under seventy seven twenty six. As long as this is above seventy seven dollars, then I'm fine. It's bullish. If it's below, then it's still on the uh, under bearish. And we can't really call it bearish either because it it does get a support from these level, the sixty one point eight and fifty. So it's stuck in between. But is it closer to bearish than bullish? Yeah, it is closer to bearish than bullish, but it's staying neutral. Seventy seven twenty six is gonna be where you should watch. And if it breaks out, that then you should be bear, uh, bullish. But currently, um, I would hold off. This is neutral, at its best, more closer to bearish. As long as the 100-day holds, as long as the 68.51 holds, then you should be fine. Disney. So let's take a look at Disney. Um, this is D Disney is not bearish at all. Um, in fact, this is a good place to buy Disney. Look at this. I, I believe that Disney is probably going to break out. But then again, the earnings, um, it, it's crazy. You know, looking at Apple, Amazon, you know, putting out one of the best earnings ever. And they can't hold. It's because the general market is so high that it's having trouble maintaining the levels. Now look at this perfect, you know, we estimated this perfect drawing. It hit there a little bit above and then went down, um, got a support on this bottom of the channel, um, then it's above the cloud. It is it is forming a red cloud, so that's something that we need to watch. But so usually you would say if the earnings come out good, you would expect, so I'm just going to say the opposite. If the earnings do come bad, then I'm expecting this to go up. Uh, this is that's how like the trend has been for the last couple of days. Um, but anyhow, I do believe now that it held the cloud, at least uh, you know you can go 190 calls on this one or something. You know I I would do or uh, buy it from here and see if it breaks above 190 because um, that's where your 50 day is. And then it's another concern. To me, that it has, it still has, you know, two weeks or so, maybe less than two weeks. But uh, earnings are on the 13th, so as long as your stop loss should be the 100-day moving average, moving average, uh, or 181, and your the resistance is going to be anywhere from 189.25 to 190. So that's about eight points up, and about nine points down. Okay. But overall, I do think that if this trend does break out, which it seems like it it did a little. I mean, I, I wasn't zoomed out when I was drawing this line, but you can always, you know, readjust it. But you get the idea that I, I think that it broke out. The, the reason that it's getting, I mean, the fact that it's getting a support at nine day uh, resistance is 21.86 on, the, uh, on Friday. Um, but it's a solid company. You know, you still have that story of if parks open, if, you know, things go back to normalization. I know we have crisis in India, um, but then again, you know, how much does it affect the U.S.? Because Disney uh, parks are, you know, I don't know if they have them in Europe, but it's definitely, we know that there's two locations in America, uh, you know, the Disney Channel and everything, uh, the IPT, not IPTV, but it's Disney now um, has you know streaming service. It's all going good for Disney, uh, and I think if parks open, that would be another uh, reason for a catalyst, I guess, uh, for the stock to go in towards 200. I think eventually the stock is going to hit 200. This is a stock that I wouldn't worry about it. Like if 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 I had like 500k on it, I would just sleep comfortably. Um, even if it crashes, you know that it's Disney, you know it's going to go back up. Um, but just technically, I know you guys have been asking these charts because you want to find the technical terms. So let me go ahead and explain this yellow line, the moving average line right here, is going to be your resistance at 185. Your next level, I'm looking at the 50-day moving average, which is 186, or the cloud top line right here, which is at 190. 
your support is going to be either the 100-day moving average, which is 182, or the cloud line right here, which is 181.78. So that's just the summary of it of things, but I think that it's going to hit 200 um, before earnings because I think people want to position in before earnings. So let's go ahead and take a look at Fubo next. Um, this is a stock that I've been you know, owning for a couple of months now. Let's see. All right, so Fubo is on. I was kind of hopeful before Friday, but the Friday's action, I'm not so sure if it had to do with Roku and YouTube uh, disagreement, the YouTube TV. Um, and it might have been that people might suspe suspect YouTube to have their own, uh, you know, streaming device or something. I, I don't know what it was, but um, it lost the nine day, which wasn't really good. Um, and the next support line should be 1966. The resistance is going to be 2037. Now, with this stock, you want to be careful when you're buying. You want to buy it in small increments. If you have a good size of stock, I recommend doing covered calls uh, because a lot of people are playing covered calls on this one, and you can keep cost averaging from the money that you're making you know, covered calls with. The issue here is how much you own, right? It's like if you if you don't have too many stocks, how much can you generate from covered calls? But then if you don't have too much stocks, then your loss is not that much. So, you know, either way, you're you're you know you have to come up with a strategy to make sure that you know you're covering yourself. But this, I mean, how much can you lose here? I think this is a beaten down stock and a well stock to be averaged down. I still like the fact that I see a small, you know, rounding bottom here, um, which I always look for when I, you know, purchase a stock for long term or maybe like a bounce back right here. I like this rounding bottom um, before the earnings and the last earnings, this was $42. So, you know, you're buying a stock that in a quarter from 43, now it's, you know, what is it like 1920? So $20. So that's like half the price. You know, going back up after the earnings towards 42 will make you 100%. So having the knowledge of that, I'd still, you know, and, and this huge buy volume right here is no joke, guys. And it was above, it, when, when that buy volume happened, it was above the current price right now. So it makes sense to collect, you know, selectively collect the stock. You know, don't go all in at once, but I, you know, I, I would think that this would be the time to buy the stock uh, for a 100% move. Now, obviously, the stochastics is bad. You know, I'm looking at long term. In the short term, you, know, you don't want to touch this yet. But in the long term, if you do take the risk, I would say that this, this is a stock that you'd want to get in. A lot of people ask me stocks when they're up in their, you know, like a, you know, uh, you know, up in the moon, and they're like, okay, you know, should, should we buy it? First of all, I never tell anybody to buy or sell. That's your own thing, decision to do. But why would you want to buy a stock when it's all the way up and you don't know how far it's going to go up, where you know that you're basically going to have a solid support at, you know, $15 at max, you're looking to lose $5 off of your trade versus adding, you know, $20 on your trade. So that's, Five to twenty, one, you know, one to four. Risk, risk reward. So that's pretty good. I, I really like the risk reward in this one, but you can't put, you know, you, you can't put everything you have in it. So you have to make sure that you have a reasonable amount. Next up on our list is JMIA, JMIA, uh, Jumia Technologies. Um, Just looking at it to analyze a couple things here. Lost a nine-day, uh, 20 is resistance, well below 1,500. There's a cloud bottom. Cloud bottom is up here. That's going to be your resistance. At 32 is going to be your resistance. Uh, your support is going to come around. Let's delete some things off of here so that it 
causes less. And, and as you can see, like we expected the stock to go here and it well above, you, you know how perfect it was here. It reached before the time, my time was off, but um, you see that to the cent, it was like right on that. And, and it, you know, so I'm guessing that we did a good job on the way up. Now let's see if we can guess to see if, we, if this is going to go up. Um, looking at the chart, there is no definitive um, play here. What I would say is that I would, I'm would i not bearish, but I would be bearish if it went below 27. It needs to hold 27. That's one thing. The second thing is I would be bullish if this trend is broken above. Okay. So I would, you know, it could come down to 27. That's fine. But if in order for me to be bullish, it needs to break above the resistance line that or the trend line that I basically just drew for you guys. Okay? It may not be perfect. Again, you get the idea. Like you, you're looking at the chart, you get the idea. I'm not being you know ge geometrical here. Um, you can you can get the idea. You can play around with it. But I would say that I would touch this high, this high, and this high to get the uh, trend line. Okay. So this would be an accurate trend line. Um, and you can draw another uh, trend line on the down channel here and go like this and guess you know you can you can guess how long if it does break 27 then you can guess where it can basically drop towards uh, all the way down to 25 so either you wait till it hits 25 or 27 buy and you're gonna buy another set at 25 or you're just gonna wait till it breaks above this trend line and and this is going to be a resistance right here. Let me go ahead and do that. This cloud line right here. That's going to be a resistance. And maybe and it, it does line up perfectly with these candle bottoms as well. So yeah, uh, 32 is going to be a resistance and so, uh, support is going to be 27 or 25. I can't tell you where this is going to go. Usually I would have a guess, but with this one I can't. Um, it's 50-50. Now you're going to say, what good did you do by reviewing this chart? Guys, I, I don't know each and every chart. I take a request and if you know I open the chart and if it does make sense to me and I can see things, I'll tell you. But right now I can't tell you anything regarding this chart because it could go this way. Or it could retry and go like this. I think the scenario will be, let me, let me tell you what I think, and this is not by any means uh, that it would happen or not, because it's my point of view. It's subjective. This is what I think it's going to happen. So slowly. I'm looking at this, um, and reason why I'm looking at that is because when I buy a stock, I always look at this pattern. Okay? So my eyes are automatically, my brain is automatically uh, is being subjective towards one idea, and that idea is rounding bottom. I wouldn't touch anything that doesn't establish this. I wouldn't even touch this. So if it goes like this, I wouldn't touch it because it's not healthy. Look at this. An example, right? Bam. What happened? saw the 50 resistance and this is a false you know fake breakout and then bam and then bam and then bam it could go like that even further so that's the scenario that i was talking about like it could if it doesn't hold 27 and your next one is 25 right here even a little bit below 25 but um it can even drag lower so that's the danger so you're looking at you know 20 what is it right now what's the price on here like 30 you're looking at $30 but and you're gonna think you, you'll be safe and you don't follow the rules of you know writ your risk and reward like you're gonna be like okay when I get in maximum pain I'll hold is here and I'll sell it here okay? if you don't follow those rules then you're gonna lose and you're gonna drag yourself and just keep on buying and buying and that's what I did with food bar was too emotional um, and I'm not complaining I'm holding it long but 
again, it's just, you know, you, you could buy other stocks and you just get stuck at it. You, know, you have to wait till um, you go break even or, you know, make a profit or something. So that's the case here. I'd rather see a rounding bottom. I'd rather see this before I get in. And I told you the resistance of 32 and support at 27. Next up is Lark. So let's take a look at it. Oh, sorry about that. So Lark here is bearish. Uh, it looks like I did draw. And when I draw, and exactly just a few minutes ago, we were talking about uh, Jumia Technologies. And I said, like, you should have a risk reward uh, and you should have um, some certain price levels that you're going to say if it goes below, I don't care, I'll just sell it. Now, you can declare that against your portfolio percentage or your size percent, whatever. Like, I'm not going to do the math. Everybody follows different rules. I don't care what, you, what kind of risk you take. But this is it. You know, $25, that 50%, it didn't hold. And then, bam, it goes down. Now, where does it meet this cloud line right here? Um, could it go down further? Yeah, it could go down to the lower cloud line, which is 23. I don't know what the news was. Uh, all the uh, lower level indicators, the internals are bearish. Um, externals are bearish. Lost all the support levels. Um, only thing you can hope for is that this right here, this line could hold and slowly recover and maybe try to get back to 25. I don't see that happening. Um, I can I can extend this trend line right here, okay. and then maybe let's duplicate this. More appropriate will be right here. So you're you're most likely looking towards the bottoms here, right right around the cloud line. So it probably could go all the way down to $23. Um, again, it's not it's not what I want or hope to happen. Uh, you know, if you have a position, I hope that you know you can recover. If you're asking me without having a position and should I buy it, I would not buy it yet. But if you if you have a position your a, your averaging cost averaging should start around you know this region 23 23 so around right here around right here okay um, it the bank did, when did I review this I don't know but the last time I reviewed it I did probably mention that it needs to hold these levels um, just so that you know the levels I talk about are very critical and if it doesn't hold you know you need to expect a three percent now again this stock doesn't really like drop like 15 percent 20 percent seems like it did like here it didn't do that but you see this huge drop it picks up a little we can call it a cap you know dead cat bounce and then bam even further so we don't know if it's going to happen and that's why the bills the bells could ring and you know you need to be on alert because every time you get a huge drop and you get a little bit, a little bit of a bounce, don't get sucked into it because there'll be more coming. Okay. Next up is Embis. So yeah, it had a huge run, more than hundred percent. And if it does, you sell. If you didn't sell, then it's your fault. And you, you can argue and discuss with me and say, hey, look, who are you to tell me what to do? Um, I bought this thing at you know so and so cents. I don't know how many cents it was. I bought it at 15 cents and I held it like a champ and I'm still holding. Well, this is the thing, right? You're buying at 15 and if you sell at $1.74, you can buy it back at 64. You can do, do, double your shares. So don't tell me that story about, oh, I'm a long-term holder, blah, blah, blah. You can double your shares. So I'm not here to argue. I'm, I'm here to look at a chart. I'm not here to argue about, you know, what kind of strategy you're holding. But to me, if I buy a stock at $10 and in one, two, three, and four, it goes more than double. First of all, if I bought it, I'd probably sell it around like $17. I don't think I would have hold it until 28 But I would have probably sold it right around here which is $19, that resistance. 
broke well, gapped above, and so forth. But I mean, I'd see where it could go is 12, 34, or 11, 63. When you see spikes like this, like just like this time, right? You saw how it saw the previous high and then just melted down. Now, I don't. I think it's going to come back down to 1234. I'm sorry. Like if you're holding it, um, if you sold it and you're going to buy it back, I would I would buy it around 1234 or maybe 1179. I would not. I don't know the reason why it went 100% in the first place and then it got dumped after earnings. Well, at, at the earnings, it seems like that's a green candle, but I, I don't know. I don't have the nerves or the health anymore to trade stocks like this if you do that's fine but don't ask me honestly because I, I mean as i as i grow older i'm not like an old person but as i grow older and mature in trading i'm sorry but i don't i i just don't have the health the nerve system or i, I can't take as much risk anymore because i have more liabilities and i have to think of you know other than you know, if you're single and you don't care so forth that's your choice but um i i just can't you know risk it anymore as much you know moving five you know 100 percent in five days that's it's like gamestop you know everybody talked about gamestop and it went like you know from when it went from like 80 80 dollars to 400 it's like you know this is almost like a mini gamestop here so just take take the chill pill and you know Sell it, wait for it to, you know, bottom out, okay? Look at the bottoming here. It's going to form around the 100-day moving average. That last bounce was from 100-day moving average. So my guess is that it could fall from one, it could fall down at 1174 till it establishes a bottom. But this 100-day moving average was pretty good strong support level, okay? Next up is NEO. Now, it fell after earnings, then picked up. But it, I think the 50-day, last time I looked, 50-day was uh, its resistance. So it kind of got stuck there. And here I'll show you. You see this purple line, like pinkish purple line? It touched one, two, three times. It closed above 20 but below 9. It's like around, you know, but right, right around 9-day moving average. But I like this bottoming process. And as I told you guys so many times, the bottoming out process is healthy and it takes months. Okay, you just go up, come back down, go up, come back down. And maybe each of these candles would cost you like $2,000, $3,000. So, you know, from this move from 32 to 45, 30 to 45 would be 50%. So 32 to 45, 46, around 50%. Um, and then... Yeah. If you invested hundred thousand, that's fifty thousand, and then all of a sudden, in two weeks, you lose that fifty thousand, and you gain back thirty thousand, and then you lose that thirty thousand, and then you gain back th that you know forty-five thousand of that fifty thousand profit, and then you lost it again. Now you have thirty thousand. So all of these moves could cost you a lot. Now you're going to tell me how can we? Uh, trade so that we would catch all of these. So there's no possible way. It's like you're, you know, going against the machines. I don't have a magic trick to guess all of these things. It, I would have been a billionaire. Yeah. And I don't get these people that open like a trading channel things, and they're like, oh, you know, I have a million dollars in my account, or five million dollars, and I'm teaching you guys how to trade. Bullshit. Why would you charge people $30 a month? Why would you even need it? If you, if you have $5 million, $2 million, if you're really rich, why would you need to open a trading service? You're going to say, well, it's free money. Well, yeah, you know, sheep following, it's free money. Why not, right? But the issue is, as, as a consumer, why would I want to trust somebody that makes you know, that has trades with five six million dollars and needs my thirty dollars a month or hundred dollars a month just doesn't make sense anyhow so i don't have that magic trick and neither is anybody else so they're going to sell you the bridge thinking that you'll own the bridge but you don't um that's what it is is it's a game of now 
couple couple um, you know minutes ago I was talking about Envis. Now Neo is different from Envis. Okay. Now you know when when you buy Envis and you make 100% in four days, you're going to sell it. Neo, you won't make 100% in four days. So that's the difference. Um, now you're telling me strategically, you know, I drew this chart, and I think this is a little, oh, it, it's perfect, okay, it's perfectly on. So it, um, I drew this chart and say, well, I know that in a huge drop that you're supposed to usually sell it right, right around like 50% to 61.8 percentile. Yeah, you could have sold that 50%. That's, I'm not arguing about that. But the bottoming process takes time. That's what I was trying to tell you. And it still has not been completed yet. And it's still not in the cloud yet. It'll still struggle. It'll still go back up and down until it like, you know, plays around in the cloud. So I'm looking at NEO around June, July. It'll, it'll go back up towards where I'm expecting. But is it okay to buy? That's why I was saying like buy a little. If it goes up, fine. You don't have to sell it because you made little money. But if it goes back down, you're like, who cares? You buy more here, okay? And then you buy more here, and then you buy more here, and then you buy more here. Until and until you're like, okay, now I have a pretty good size, and I pretty much have a good idea that, you know, it's clearly holding up the 35 levels, and I'm just going to let it go. That's how you play these types of stocks, okay? So um, talked a lot, but haven't said anything about technicals here. Your support is going to be first support 36.88, and the second support is going to be $35. The resistance is obviously the 50-day the fifty day moving average. and It's a moving average, so it's going to move. But I, I, I could tell you that at least your support, your resistance is going to be $40.54. Okay. Next up is Nike. Now, we say in America Nike, but Europeans say Nike. So when I go to, like, Europe and say Nike, they look at weird. And, like, I stay there for the summer, then come back. I used to when I was young. I come back here and say Nike, they're like, are you talking about what is Nike? Nike, Nike. And it's just amazing, you know, how people can't understand that you're trying to say Nike. So what? You know, some people are just so arrogant, trying not to understand it. All right. So, anyway, so we'll call it. I'm gonna call it Nike, not Nike, just for the Europeans. If you guys are watching, so Nike here, um, under the cloud, above twenty, above nine. Resistance is going to be 50, so that's the 135 resistance. And the cloud line to me seems more of a reasonable resistance. I'm looking right here at 136. The bottom support is going to be your 129. It, it's already had its earnings. If you want to buy this stock, you want to draw this trend. Or if you're looking to buy this stock, you want to, you want to draw this trend. Trend is your friend. Um, now, you can argue and say that, why don't you see a rounding bottom? I do see it. Um, I can tell you that, but I also see a rounding top, a huge one. So let, let me tell you what I'm talking about. And maybe we, we might need to auto-zoom back. And I'm going to take a screenshot really quickly and tell you what, it, what is the, the bearish part I see and what is the bullish part I see. Okay. Bullish, bullish, above 9, above 20, all bullish, okay? Bear is, and this is this is bullish, the, the bottoming, right? Uh, or you can draw it from here at the bottom, okay? Um, but the, the bearish size that I'm going to talk about is the big rounding top. That's concerning. Um that it's under it's formed a red cloud and it's under the cloud and it's been getting rejected so this tells me that these rejections could be costly okay and the next time it goes up and gets a rejection it might very well go to 110 dollars okay fill this gap right here it did it, it did fill it here actually um so i don't think the gap needs to be filled but I think this gap right here could be your support lines. Um, but see, this is where I go bullish. Okay? So there you go. You break out here, that's bullish. Here, I don't. Let me delete all of this stuff or let, let's clear all. Okay. This is how I would be bullish in this stock. Okay? You see this trend line right here? 
breaks above and never get sucked in when it goes above the cloud because it's going to come back and retest, I will be bullish right here and then play. Where I would see a resistance will be right there. However, until and unless it breaks above the clock, gets a support, comes up, that's where I would be a buyer. I wouldn't risk it here because there's always, you know, pulling back. It's a nice stock, gives you dividend, it's a strong company, but I don't like their products. They're just selling you cheap rubber, made in China. I've never had a Nike shoes that lasted more than six months to me. You're going to say, what the hell are you doing with your shoes? Well, I buy my shoes to use them. I don't buy shoes so that it matches my clothing. When I was a kid, we used to get shoes once a year. And you wore it to school, you wore it to your school, you wore it to your you know, playground, and you better clean it. Every week I used to clean my shoes. And I come from the 90s when you know we had the you know Soviet Union and so forth. So I'm not, I didn't grow poor. But I grew in an environment that was not materialistic. I don't buy shoes to freaking match my t-shirt. There are so many poor people in Africa that can't even find water or food. And then fools here. I mean, it just makes me sick to my stomach. People buying $1,000 worth of shoes. People buying shoes to match their freaking $15 t-shirts or whatever $100 t-shirts is just ridiculous. You buy a sh you buy shoes because it's it's well built, it lasts you long and it fits and you know it fits and it's comfortable and you wear it. You buy a color that's neutral so it can match all your clothes. And then with that extra money that you have in your pocket Go damn feed hunger people that be, or people that need shoes. Go buy, go, go and buy them shoes. So freaking selfish. I, I hate selfish people in this world. And I hate people that are not considerate, that don't even know what, you know, other, what people in other parts of the world are going through. It's, I mean, I, I'm sorry. I'm going to, like, I, when I talk about this stuff, I you know I could talk about it for two hours. Um, speaking of Nike, Nike, whatever you want to call it. I mean, I went I went the other day to buy my son and my daughter shoes, um, and they're growing, of course. So it's like you know, back then we had hand me downs. I wear I get shoes, I take care of them. If my feet grew, my sister would wear them. So so forth, right? We all went through that. You guys know what I'm talking about. Not not the teenage people, not not the you know the current generation, but you know what I'm talking about. Um, but the thing here is that when I went to Nike, the kids' shoes, kids' shoes. My son is seven years old. I mean, shoes starting from hundred dollars. I mean, I'm not a cheap person. I'll, I'll you know if my son needs it, I'll buy him hundred thousand dollars shoes. I don't care. It's just that in general, you know, you have to take an average, you know, person's income. You're buying a seven-year-old shoes and you're paying $100 and I know how cheap Nike shoes are made. I mean, it's just ridiculous. I, that, I mean, that's one thing that, I, you know, I don't want to buy Nike because their products are overrated. They're cheap, not good quality at all, um, but the company does well because they're so fundamentally they are so well into their apps and websites and the electronic shopping that this coronavirus didn't affect them at all and in fact i can tell you this those stupid people who got their checks from you know the trump aid and you know biden aid i i could tell you that there are some typical people rather than you know buying food or paying their rent they went and bought you know 200 300 dollar nike shoes I can bet you, I can bet you that happened. So regardless if you hate the company or not, you know, emotional, emotional attachments, you have to get rid of them and just analyze the company in that way. I think they pro probably had huge sale of people dumping their, you know, um, relief fund money into Nike. Go freaking buy the stock 
and then make maybe hundred dollars, two hundred dollars, and buy your Nike shoes from the Nike stock. At least, at least you know, you're not waste of material. You know, I, I just we're it's a waste of material. I think humans are just damaging the world by being materialistic. We're producing, 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 selling, selling, selling. There's always dump. There's always trash. There's always wasted material, pollution. We're just gonna we're ruining our lives with this materialistic psychology. Um, I mean, I'm not a co communist or anything, but still, um, we have to change. We have to change in order for the world to become a better place. Next up is now. I believe this is service now. ServiceNow is a product that is widely used. The sell-off is huge here on the earnings day. MACD, RSI, Stochastics here totally got crushed. The cloud bottom saved it. Now, I believe the product will go, like, it will not die. Like, it's a solid product. I keep getting ServiceNow development, ServiceNow testing, ServiceNow development jobs on my email every single day, even though I don't do ServiceNow development or testing. It just comes. Government uses, a lot of commercials use it. So overall, in the long term, this is, this is a you know, buy and hold type of stock. I wouldn't trade this. I wouldn't do a day trade. And if you had this stock for a long term stock and you're worried about the drop, I wouldn't be worried. Now, because, I mean, one thing is that you, you can see all the software stocks almost had, you know, the big cap, the mega cap. Um, I wouldn't put service now with Apple, but Apple had pretty much, the, you know, QQQ had this W and the flag. But what Apple did was held on to the flag, the head part, right? Uh, service now totally got crushed. Now, the fact that it held the cloud bottom, it's a good thing. So I would watch to see. So I'm going to take a screenshot. So for those who are long. What I would do is, I would, I would watch this. I don't know why this is so zoomed. Okay, so I would watch this area right here. So if it holds, if it doesn't hold, you're looking at the bottom here. Um, that would be my concern. Um, the play would be here is that it got rejected on the 50-day moving average, which is right here. Right, got rejected. Um, it, it could retry and come back, retry and come back. And then this right here is going to be your resistance, the cloud top. Okay. And then the gap. I would not, and, and, and then you can draw this line right here and then this line right here. So it could even go back here or it could come back here. So let's go back. So what I'm expecting is the stock can, you know, if it breaks above the cloud, it's going to be a resistance at 544 or wh wh where, whatever the time is, right? It could be 530, 540, depending on how long it takes to get there. But it, it, this is going to be your selling point and just watching carefully. Even if it breaks above, I would not buy it until, you know, it forms a base. Um, that That's what I can tell you. Um, I would be not buying this dip. I would not be selling the entire position either if I had one. Now, if you know if it breaks down 463, that's where I would be like, okay, you know, I I run off because then you're talking about further drop and it loses as a major support. Okay, um, you can you can tell that this right here could be. Or this candle could be here. There you go. You see this? So you're going to be in this price range for some time. I didn't check the news. Why? Like, did it? It was kind of like an Apple drop. Like it had a good earnings. It, everything was good, but it kind of got sold off. Or is it that the earnings were bad? Some news hit, and that's why it dropped. I, I don't know. So if it's something like Apple, I wouldn't be worrying it. I'd buy the dip. But if it's something that's technically something wrong, they lost a huge customer, they you know they were doing terrible, then I'd wait on it to see if this cloud holds. Okay. Next up is Pfizer. Now I don't really like to do any technicals on Pfizer since I know Pfizer. 
for the longest time, it's been in the 30, 30 to 35 range. It's like, um, you know, right here, since I've known Pfizer since like, the last five years that I've, you know, seen the chart, it's going it, to, it, you know, average is going to be $32. You're in this game because you're, you're in here for the uh, dividend. That's all it is. Um, and you can, you can look at the even further out timeline in here, 20 years monthly. Since uh, when when is this date right here? Fifteen two thousand fifteen till now. Your average is it goes back to like twenty nine thirty five twenty nine thirty five. Now because of the vaccination, that's when it kind of broke off that multi year top and it went and came back down. Or actually, never mind. It broke off the top right here, came back up here, and then dropped back down. Now I wouldn't. I don't know um, what's holding Pfizer. Um, is it because Corona vaccination um, news? You know, well, actually the blood the blood clotter wasn't. It was Johnson and Johnson. It wasn't Pfizer. So I don't know what's holding. Maybe because they're partnered. They you know partners with um, what's the German company? Uh, I forgot the name, but. Um, I don't know what it is. It, you know, it, it did come up to, and guys, this is another thing that, you know, I haven't done Pfizer for such time, but it did come to our yellow box. So what I usually do is sell when it reaches. So uh, it is flagging, by the way, but when I hit these yellow boxes, I'm usually a fan of selling and waiting. It is flagging. It looks bullish. Um, but I always get scared when something reaches my target and I don't sell and then it goes back down. I don't know when it was. It was probably a couple months ago when I did Pfizer. And I remember I said, why, you know, why do people know Pfizer? It's because of their Viagra. And how did they invent Viagra? It's because they're actually testing um, heart failure or something to do with heart condition, um, blood clottering, something, right? And they gave this old man the the drug that they're trying to produce for heart medication and it caused them erection. So they said, you know what, you know, we could put this in the market as, you know, erectile, dis erectile dysfunction uh, product and make money. And they, you know, they became very famous. Now, Pfizer wasn't just a small company before Viagra anyways, but um, it's always a good company. But, um, you know, I remember talking about that last time when I, when I did the chart and I'd give you guys a target and it's there. I'm not sure if you're asking because it reached my target, but it's flagging. I would say that it, as long as it's above 37.85, I would hold it because that's where your 20 is and you don't want to lose it. But if you're like, you know, screw it, I got this from 33 and I'm selling at 39, that's your choice. Next up is Palantir. Now, um, with Palantir, this is my, you know, one of my biggest holdings. And I'm more emotional. Actually, I, mean, I trust this guy really well. Um, he's in Europe, though. I have to get his... Because when I'm emotionally tied to a company, I do always get second opinion. Um, I want to try to be as objective as I can. Um, however, um, you guys know me. It's, it's like... you know. I am pretty much an emotional guy, so when I when I talk about emotional topics, you can understand from my you know yapping about things. Um, all right, let's try to be objective. Your resistance twenty four dollars. Your support twenty two sixty three. Short term, okay. um, because earnings are coming up, anything can be played out. I. Don't want to like delete my target here, but I'm going to try to get like rid of all these things. I'm going to delete a lot of things. Okay. Now this can stay. This can stay because it does show us resistance and support. Okay. So other than these lines, I like the bottoming process. I didn't like the fact that we couldn't break over this pink 50. 50-day moving average, which was kind of frustrating for me this week. 
However, I know the 2263 is going to be a good support. But anything I say could go the opposite way because earnings. We don't know. And especially with earnings, it's just anybody's guess. As you saw, Apple, Amazon delivering solid, solid, tremendous results. And they couldn't even hold. So Palantir, you know, giving out the first positive result um, and a lot of hype. And it could go down to $15. I wouldn't be surprised. So I, I don't like to do technicals before earnings. Uh, because earnings will declare the technicals itself at this point. Um, I don't think the stock is going to move that much up or down. Um, I think it would be a gift at 20 if it comes back down again before the earnings. I like the fact that it's reaching the cloud um, and it's going to get inside the cloud and the cloud is getting tighter and tighter. Uh, if we do see a confirmation from the Ichimoku cloud turning green, it would be very nice, but again, I, I don't want to do analysis on Palantir till the 11th because it's just, it's meaningless. It's meaningless. Uh, we knew the dump was coming the previous earning. The, the earning before that, um, it was 5% down after hours and then it just exploded. Like it was like 15, 20%. I remember those days and I'm like, how could something go this fast? It went from 14 to 32 in like a week or two. So I don't know what this earning is going to bring, but if it does bring and we could see crazy moves, um, I believe it can go up to $32. You're going to say, why? You know, we went up 45, 32 isn't crazy, but you look at the percentages, guys. This is this stock has like 1 billion um, shares um, in the market. So you're talking about outstanding shares of 1 billion of shares and you're talking about, you know, from 22 to 32, $10 in 22 or 23, let's say $10 in 23 is 43%. And you don't like that? I don't know. People are used to 2020. Things don't work out like that in the real world. That was just 2020. Um, all right. Next up is plug, so let's go ahead and take a look at plug. Um, speaking of emotionally, I had this stock at one dollar. It went to like twelve seventy or something. I didn't sell it, and it went crushed. Andrew left, made a report, and went down crushing to like nine dollars or five dollars. I don't know what it was. I had to sell it that day, and then. It went down to like $1, $2, and I was like telling my friends like, look, you know, it's not moving anywhere. I remember remember that day we were talking about it, blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, a couple years later, it went above $70. Now, to me, I don't know what changed in this company. I didn't follow news. Their CEO, I think, is not the best CEO or the most honest CEO that I would think. And I, you know, researched the guy back then. Um, not really, you know, indicating anything. I'm not telling you he's a thief or anything or if he's, you know, cooking the books or anything. But I just don't like the man, you know. Um, and this stock here, to me, you know, I was watching it at $1. Now it's 75 It's like, is it really worth it? Now it's 28 but when it was 75 like, is it really worth that much? Is it really worth? Sometimes you ask yourself, and you know, if it's Apple or Amazon or Netflix, they, they've proven themselves, right? You bought Netflix at you know twenty dollars or fifty dollars, whatever, and you're like, yeah, it's five hundred dollars now. You know, is it worth it? Well, you ask yourself, how was the product used that time when it was worth fifty dollars, and how widely or how well it does now, and does it justify? Plug at $1, the product I'm looking at, the customers I'm looking at, and then plug at 75 which was a couple of months ago. Now it's 28 How well the product is and the consumer base, I don't think anything has changed since then. So I'm sorry to be such, you know, um, jackass here, but 
I'm not trying to put down this. That, that's fundamentals side of it. Think technicals. 20 is going to be your resistance, 20-day moving average, which is where basically got the highs of Friday, right around 29.14. And the 9-day is going to be your support, which is the lows of Friday. So you'd have to watch this action carefully. If it loses 27.62, then you're looking at 26.50 and then 24.60. If it breaks above 20, I think it has room right, right, right around 36. But to me, even the even buying this company, forget 28, even buying the company at $10 is too much for me. Because again, I'm looking at it and saying what had changed fundamentally from $3 to 75. Now you're going to say, you know, um, NEO was, you know, $1 and um, now it's, you know, I don't know, what is it, like 38, 40? So how come you're okay with NEO being that? Well, look how many factories, look how many cons consumers it has, look at the product. Reason why it was $1 is because people thought it was going to go bankrupt. The business was still good. It, it had the technology. It had everything. Now, plug power is a hydrogen power. Toyota had hydrogen power cars, or they they had a model. If Toyota is not stupid, they would have marketed that car, and it would have been selling millions of cars right now. Right. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that out for you. Toyota Mirai, that's what it was called. They're still making it. It's still on their website. It's just like, have you seen them on the street? Honestly, I don't. And even if you do, I don't even know, like, is there, like, some type of charging stations? How do I, like, refill a hydrogen fuel cell car? By the way, nice-looking car. Um... I was at Toyota yesterday. We bought my uh, one of my best friend. He's like a brother to me. Bought him um, Highlander. So it's it's not a bad looking car. It's just that have you guys ever heard of Toyota Mirai or however you want to Mirai? I don't know how it's Japanese. I think I might be like murdering the name here. Um, have you guys ever seen it? Heard of it? I haven't at least right so it has like this but it doesn't like it doesn't really future it has all this car you know 402 mile range um, with fuel cell like how do you how do you fill hydrogen in this like I, I don't know what, what do you do with it as a hydrogen tank I, I think obviously so and then it's 402 miles my car can make 400 miles so what what is it like is hydrogen cheap like why would I buy a hydrogen fuel cell car Give me a reason. You get what I'm saying? Like, is there an advantage? Am I saving on consumption? Am I am I saving the planet? Obviously, yeah, it's nice for the planet. But my car emission is nearly zero. So it's like you know the cars that are in the, the new new model cars aren't that you know bad in emissions. So they're pretty good. Um. And it says, you know, Mirai, you're near your area. I don't know how widely, so I'm just going to, this is not my zip code, but I'm just going to type another one that I know. Not there. Currently available in California and Hawaii. So that's my thing, right? Um, did Toyota make, and I remember when I, when I had the stock and the, went from one dollar to some you know like twelve cent twelve dollars or something I remember even back then Amazon is gonna do this oh they sell forklifts blah 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 they're not gonna make money the price doesn't justify selling forklift power hydrogen power hydrogen fuel cell power forklifts for you know seventy five dollar stock price so they have to give me something like bus you know they talked about buses blah 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 FedEx but I'm not seeing anything car the company still the you know, the earnings you look at it is still negative so i'm not trying to put down the company it might have a potential 
the technicals might not be that bad, but overall in the long run, I wouldn't I, I would say thirteen dollars maybe, but I wouldn't get in this because it's not the Tesla. It's not a next, you know, electrical car technology. Or even you just saw it, right? It's not even available anywhere. Now you're gonna say you wanna buy it early than later, but it went from three dollars to seventy five before the hydrogen fuel cell thing ever came out. So you get what I'm trying to say. I don't want to make it too long. It's been like eight minutes, but you get what I'm trying to say. It doesn't matter what the technical is. The company itself, I don't think, is worth this much fundamentally. And technically, 36 is 37 is doable if it breaks out of the moving averages. Um, next up is QS. It is quantum space. Now, again, we talked about plug just before, and now it's quantum space. I'm not sure if this was off of spec. Uh, a lot of the companies that, you know, merge off of spec aren't doing so good right now. Um, and this is a company that I would probably... I... I don't know, the earnings, I don't know if earnings is going to make a great effect on this one. I don't know how earnings are expected in this. So again, it's very tough, May 11th. Um, it could happen, anything could happen after earnings, but it's a huge red cloud. The red cloud consistently is going up. I don't see a solid line like I see on other stocks that I, you know, even it's under the cloud and it's red. Like you at least see some establishment of, you know, cloud getting twisted and turning into green. It's not happening here. Um, I think the stock looks, uh, one thing for the short term looks good because it held a nine day. It could go towards 39, 45, but overall, I don't think the stock looks good. The chart, I don't think the chart looks good. Let's say not the stock, but the chart doesn't look good. Until and unless, now my thing is, Okay, there you go. Until and unless it breaks above this orange trend line. Breaks above that, then it's good. But till then, I wouldn't touch it. Okay. There you go. So you follow this trend line. And I think it, it can guide you a little bit. You know, the next, you know, bounce could be from 28, could go up, I think 47 even, but I wouldn't buy these spikes. I just, I, I don't know. Some part of me about this company uh, tells me that it, it's not going to, it's not going to, you know, go back to 132. If you're buying it because you think it's going to go to 132, this, this was the Tesla hype. This was all the GMEs and stuff like that, right? So when, what the company is doing... Again, if you're treating the stock market like a casino, that's your, I'm not, you know, I'm not here for that. that sometimes, you know, I take a lot of requests and some, sometimes I don't know the company. I don't know their product. So I have to speak in behalf of just the chart. But when I know the company, when I know their product and when I know the chart, I can tell you in the long term, not in the long term, because nobody can tell you what's going to happen, but I can guess certain things from experience. And this is one of the stocks that I honestly think was a hype at these levels. And if it gets to 49 to 55, 55 around there, then fine. It, it, I'd be a seller there um, because we don't know if it's going to break this trend. Just like here, just like here, I'll be, I'd, be, I'd be a seller right around this orange line that I just drew. And just watch. If it breaks out, fine. I wouldn't be scared buying it above the breakout because that's when I said I'll be bullish. But when it touches it, sell it, just wait. All right, next up is Sava. So let's take a look at this chart. I don't recall, yeah, I don't recall um, doing this. So usually with the, um, the medical stocks, pharmaceuticals, it's usually there's some news behind it. I love the bounce off of 100. Moved across and basically went all over above all these uh, 9 and 20, and then it's above uh, 50 as well. Bounce off of 100. The chart is absolutely tearing for the last uh, couple days or weeks. And 
it's absolutely on a flag right now and the uh, resistance level is going to be your cloud top so each day whatever this is 53 absolutely tearing it um stochastics rsi macd it's everything is bullish about it the issue here is this um, I've talked so much hyped about this chart because I've seen this bounce is rid ridiculously good. But the issue is these the, the candle bottoms here is going to be your resistance. <clears throat> so right here, whatever this line was, 51.20, that's going to be your resistance. If you break above that, this is a really nice recovery. Um, very long-awaited recovery. In fact, it probably killed all the hopes here when it went on 33. Now, from 33 to 46 is even a good move. If you're waiting on the news, if this is like on an FDA trial or something, I don't know what it is. This is like, I've heard of Sava, but I, I don't know what they're working on. Um, it could tear it apart and it could go all the way up. But and I, I can I can do that. It's just the chart uh, is so hard to do um, extensions. But let me just do it this way. I don't know if it would make sense. But $100 could be foreseeable. If Salva has, I, again, I don't know what the company is doing. I don't know what kind of news it's been waiting on. But um, it could very well go to $100 if, if that news comes. Okay. Next up is C. So C has been pretty good on recovery. So I know the highs was 285, dropped back 189, which was very, it's a good, you know, risky, but pretty good. It had a V-shaped uh, recovery mode. When above the cloud, remember I always keep saying this, when something breaks above the cloud, don't go in it. Don't get sucked in until you get a second bounce. Okay, So I'm going to show you exactly what that scenario is right now. By the way, bullish chart, um, it, I'll tell you where it's going to go in a second, but we did see, we did hit the 100% um, mark here, and it just basically turned over from there. But you see it went above the cloud, came back above the cloud, and then got the second confirmation I want. So when you when it goes above the cloud, you, you sell and then start buying it slowly until you get a second bounce. And this was kind of scary, but look how technical this was. And I think last time I charted, it was this bounce actually, but it bounced off of 50 perfectly and just went up to 100. Now it's coming back. Now we can, again, mathematically just uh, go ahead and do this. Basically bounce off of the 50. It could it go lower, it could go to 61.8, which is 247, and then the next bounce will be even harder. Now let's go, it, we'll take the scenario, we'll take the scenario where it bounces back from um, 61.8. Um, you're looking at the next 100% would be 297, if that works out. I think it's a good stock. Um, I would say that you can go in a little bit here maybe 247 and then uh, aim for that 297 area that I just talked about the chart looks good above the cloud we get a green cloud above all the moving day averages I know the stochastics uh, MACD are kind of merging the RSI kind of went down because of the recent you know pullback but I think the pullback is about to be finished either at 252 which is the current price level or 247 so the chart looks um, like it's going to bounce off from those levels Next up is SFT. Now, the follower has said either do SFT or um, uh, HIMX. I just I didn't I never charted SFT, so I wanted to do shift technologies. Um, yeah, it, it's a clear resistance at this level. So I don't think it's on a bullish run. So when, when we talk about like a bullish run, there's two levels here. Right? Um, this is definitely not bullish or it didn't even start a run yet to be considered a bullish run. Um, MACD good, Stochastic's good, RSI doing a little uh, head here, um, doing a flag, I guess. Um, but I don't think this chart will start looking bullish until, you know, the price is above 890. Um, and that's where your resistance is. The support level is going to be $8. Okay? So basically, I'll tell you where the, where the support is. Basically, your support is at these levels right here. And you could go as low as this right here, just to be safe. Okay. Which is coinciding with 90 moving average. So 793, 8 around there is fine. Um, there's a range here that I want to go ahead and highlight so you, get, you guys can see. That's the range. That's the trading range. 
It did break out, which was bullish, but came back down. I don't know what that was about. Maybe it was the February March crash and you know, solid green, solid green candle here to huge body. Um, seems like it you know goes up with good you know candles, but then comes back down. I don't know the company very well to say anything. Um, I don't know if it's a new company. It looks like it's coming from 10, so it could have been a uh, merge off of SPAC. I don't know. So I'm going to delete that yellow box because it's hurting our eyes. Um, and then I'm going to draw a long-term trend line. So you always want to um, consider some things here. Um, you can go like this. So this channel, if it goes down, your next low low would be the 664, which is lower low. I said low low. Um, that would be around, if it hits, it hits here, that would be 640s. Um, I think the greater resistance area at $9 or even a little above 933, that would be my sell point and wait if it breaks out and establishes some type of uh, safe bottoming around 978 then it can tear up. But for now, um, this chart is clearly on a downtrend and the support area for the near term is 790 to 8 and the resistance is about 930. Okay. Next up is Snow. So Snow and Palantir pretty much in the same business. Uh, Snow more on the commercial side of things and Palantir has more of the um, government side of business. Now, not that Palantir is trying to do you know commercial. They are, but uh, snow is more established in the commercial side. Um, I don't know when I drew this red line, and I guess I was pretty much uh, solid on it. Um, it basically is a resistance. Uh, we can we can conclude that there is some type of you know I don't know if this is going to be a bear flag or it's going to be um, I mean it could be a bear flag if it breaks down. Okay. Um, that, <laughs> I just wanted to put things in simpler terms. Uh, you're looking at a buy point of maybe Friday's lows or even a little lower, like around 225. My selling would be around 245. I think I covered snow last time, last week, and there's nothing that I could actually change anything yet because I don't think in a week, uh, nothing changes in a week. Uh, your target should be 304 to 328 by summer. I like the fact that it looks like pretty much a Palantir's chart at this moment, but I like the fact that it's coming near in the cloud um, and the cloud needs to get thinner a little bit but let's see you know your 50 day moving average on the shorter term is your resistance uh, and it's very clear I'm going to show you you see this purple line or magenta whatever you want to call it coming down that's your 50 day moving average hit it once twice three times four times and almost Friday the fifth time so that's clearly an uh, of resistance not, but not only that on Friday it also lost the 9 and 20 day moving averages now that's going to be your near term so this week 232 is going to be your uh, first resistance and the second resistance is going to be around 236 okay next up is Tesla so let's take a look at Tesla um, I did uh, point out a Tesla chart on Twitter so let's take a look what I said about Tesla a couple days ago and let's see if I was correct because I honestly don't know what I you know go through so many things at work and then also charts. Um, so when I said it, when I put this chart out, it was 7.12, and I gave the comment out and said, so a lot of this is what I established on Twitter, FinTweet, or fin, FinTwit, whatever you want to call it. Um, there's two types of people. People that are honestly trying to help and just put out charts. That's it. No flexing muscles, just charts. Yeah, my account went up this much, my account went no no flexing muscles. Just just people like me, right? Just putting charts for educational purposes. There are other charts, there are other chartists, or there are other people, not say chartists, there are other people in FinTwit community that tries to make them make themselves look like they're gurus and they'll put out things and then immediately they'll delete their tweets. Nothing that I put here so far, I haven't had a deleted single tweet unless I like literally mistakenly had a typo I basically fixed the spelling because once you tweet you can't edit it back basically put it back so uh, put given giving an example this Friday this tweet that I posted I think I was doing like a, I was walking my dog so I did like a voice to text and I said ticker but it came out as something else 
I forgot what it said. So I had to delete my tweet and put it back with the correct spell. But other than that, I don't delete tweets. Whatever is there, it's there. I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I'm correct, I'm correct, right? So here, and then the other people that are, you know, actual gurus. So if, if I was like, you know, what could I say? The guy Muhammad, what was his name? I actually follow him. Um, how do you spell Muhammad? There's so many ways you can spell, right? The guy that goes on, you know, you know who I'm talking about. The uh, the guy with the mustache, he's always on CNN, CNBC giving out. So these are like professional guys, right? Um, not clowns like, you know, other people that I don't want to give names because then I don't know if it would, um, if they can like file a you know, complaint about me calling them clowns. But you know that clown that rings a bell and yells all the time. You know what, who I'm talking about, that clown. Anyhow, then there's these clowns. And then the other types are the ones that are, um, you know, trying to put a fame out there randomly, putting fake charts with fake times and saying, like, follow me to win more. Those, you know, scam artists. Okay. Those are the other groups. And then there are other groups that try to, they don't have any monetary uh, perspective or, you know, uh, you know, tricking people, scamming people, but they're, they just have this thing of, I think they're loners, and they just want to get um, followers. And the way they do it is, only thing they post is Tesla. Any bad news on Tesla, I don't know how they find to do this, but it's like, you know, you stepped on a shit. And you're like, oh, the good thing about it is that I have to clean my boots. I haven't washed them for, you know, two months. So they they turn the shittiest news about Tesla uh to be the best thing for Tesla. I don't know how they do it. Uh, they're, you know, playing with words. And then they'll get a bunch of likes and followers. So only thing they tweet about is Tesla. And they'll just pump Tesla no matter what it takes. Um, you know, I, I don't know what their mentality is. Or the Bitcoin guys. Like there's Bitcoin. If Bitcoin goes down, technically it's broken. They'll try to pump it just to get followers, just to get likes, right? So these these people. We have to watch... The, the, the whole story, that's why, the reason why I'm telling you this is because Tesla, whenever you see feeds on Twitter, 90% of technical analysis of Tesla is with these people who try to get followers just pumping Tesla for anything. Okay? Tesla didn't sell any, you know, considerable amount of Tesla X, Tesla S. Yeah, you know, a lot of people are trying to buy a Model 3, but, the, you know, the company's not... The valuation versus the product, you know, that they're selling is not matching. That's what I think it is. Um, are they a good company? Um, the product is good. Yeah, everything is good. It's just that, you know, right now, Tesla is not going to skyrocket like it did in 2020. If you can get 15, 20, 30 percent a year, that would be good. Yeah, kiss your brain. But um, don't follow these pumpers. Just try to get reasonable logic okay so when i posted this another person had asked you know what's your opinion on tesla where it heads up said if it holds 828 or if it holds current level it'll go to 820 if not 649 and that current level seems to be when i tweeted it it was 712 okay so now let's take a look at what happened so when i tweeted it was 712 the price, the price area, right? And I said, if it doesn't hold, where, what did I say it was going to go to? Um, 649. Again, when was this? April 27th, okay? 649, okay? It's all up here. Yeah, chart is here, here, and I marked this orange line, right? And I drew this extension. Now, it was on TradingView, so I don't have this current chart, but we can take, I can pull up TradingView, no problems. So I just wanted to show you that I'm not perfect, but I just wanted to show you don't get pumped up into Tesla account or people who review Tesla because that's the only thing they're doing. In fact, when I said 649, let's see where it went up, where, where it went down to. What's the lowest here? Six. Let's look at this down. It says low 666 pretty much held this right here. So this right here. Now, reason why I said 649 is because of the 100 day 100% extension. 
Now, is, is that still the play? I don't know because the cloud is it's a cloud support and a huge uh, you know buys on Friday with all the electric EV uh, stocks and new as well. We can say that. Um, so the cloud bottom is support. The cloud top is going to be resistance at 790. Okay. Um, now, why did I say if it holds current levels, so 712, 719, it's because of the cloud. If it breaks up, I'm expecting 828. Of course, there's going to be 773 resistance, but your ultimate goal is going to be 820. So that's, I don't know if this chart is clear. I know I was, I was pulling out a um, chart from TradingView, or not, sorry, um, Thinkorswim. Um, Thinkorswim, I have 844. Here I have 828. So I don't know how the you know the charts differ. Maybe I, I wasn't like on spot on. I don't know. I'll take a look at it. But to me, 828, 844 doesn't matter what it is. It, it's reasonable unless if it breaks above 712 or the cloud top right here, 720. Okay, holding the cloud bottom is a good thing. Can it come to, Can it come down to 646, 649, whatever I stated? Sure, it can. In fact, I didn't. I think I put the bottom channel here at 649, not even the extension. So I thought it would hit because you see bounce, bounce, and I think it would bounce like around 649. So right here, if it does, the next bounce is going to be towards. You see this top, top, the top, this channel, the blue, the blue line that I drew. So it's, you know, it's reasonable. I'm not pumping the stock. I'm just trying to be reasonable. I don't own a Tesla. I don't, you know, um, care about Elon Musk or any, you know, I don't care, right? So, in fact, Dodge Father is trending. Uh, let me take a look at Robinhood to see what, you know, Doggy Coin or whatever you want to call it, Dodge Coin, Doggy Coin, thirty-eight cents, nine uh, percent. Okay, it's trending. So Saturday, um, that's fine. Uh, I did get it at thirty. I think I need to sell it. I'll, I'll sell it after the video. Anyhow, um, well, it wasn't a considerable it wasn't a considerable amount, so I don't really care. Um, I did see that Dogecoin did have a play around thirty was a good uh, play, so forty cents is reasonable to sell. Ten cents, I'll take it. Thirty three percent. So anyhow, so sixty six forty nine to eight twenty eight that bounce I could play. It's a reasonable play. Okay, so that's what it is with Tesla. And that's what I mean by if you follow Twitter, if you follow my Twitter account, that's what that's why I say you, you could follow my Twitter account because when I do see good opportunity, um, I will tweet about it and you can get it. So 650 here, the, the channel here that I drew at 650, but it's okay. It's still hanging in the cloud. I, I don't know why the trading view Ichim Ichimoku cloud is a little bit different than um, the uh, Thinkorswim cloud. Because in Think or Swim Cloud, it, it the cloud looks different. It didn't hit the bottom. I have to take a look at what Trading View considers. Yeah, there is no setting. It's nine and twenty-six. Let me take a look at Ichimoku Cloud on Trading View. It is nine twenty-six. Yeah, it's the same thing. I, I don't know. I don't. I have no clue why they look different. Honestly, uh, this is something that I need to contact TradingView because the uh, I trust Thinkorswim more, but TradingView just to, just for comparison, I'll just go ahead and do you do you see where this candle and the cloud bottom is, and do you see where this candle and where the cloud bottom is? It doesn't match, so I'd have to um, and maybe you know is it logarithmic? No, it has nothing to do with it because the study doesn't move. Um, yeah. I, I don't know what it is. So I'd say, you know, I'll say it doesn't change. 650 bounce, 840s is going to be your uh, resistance or target price. Yeah, that's all it is. And the last stock of the day is Twitter. So we reviewed about 26 tickers today. Uh, give or take if I spend like good four or five minutes on it. It takes about two hours to do the video. Um, anyhow, ugly drop. Nasty volume, but even though the candle is red, the thing about this is that sometimes people think, okay, the volume bar is red, the candle is red. Um, that means that you know people sold. We don't know how many people sold, how many people. You can't. 
I don't, I don't have that uh, technicality in me or techni technical measurements on my computer to tell you how much of it was sold and how much of it was bought. But we definitely know Kathy bought a whole lot, like 1. some 1.3 million shares, not dollars, shares. And you can see my tweet about Twitter. I said this is going to hit $60. I wouldn't touch it. As I tweeted you guys out right here, and you know, I, I couldn't have guessed that they were going to ban Trump. This was a bullish call, and I said it's going to head up to, to above, you know, like 70, 75. And they banned Trump, so it kind of crashed. Held a pretty good bounce on the cloud top, or the cloud right here, and then just absolutely tore it. Okay, and then right here, I said sell. If you know, I well, if you bought it at the target, at my target, if you carried it. I said it is time to sell. Not my. It's not a recommendation again for the technicality that it hit, and that's where you would technically need selling. And I said it, it'll hit 60 in no time, and it did. Came back, hit again, came back. You see, you see the here support resistance, a little bit under the support, but the cloud bottom right here, and then resistance previous top right here. So you'd hit the double top. And then when you do a double top, you want to get out, especially when I talk about earnings, right? So you might have think if, if there wasn't earnings, I would, I would have thought that the bounce would have came back at the cloud bottom, but earnings changes results. So Palantir, uh, Snow, other earnings that are coming up that I, you know, I said that I, Disney, right? Everything can change. Okay? Huge gap up on earnings, and then it just tear, tore it apart. Um, right here, down. So where it could come down is $52 is my area that I'd be interested in. Um, I, but then I was inch, I bought Twitter at $13. Um, you know, that's where I told a lot of my friends to um, buy. And $80 is pretty good from $13 to $80. Um, right now, I think that um, agenda in Twitter after Trump is over. Trump like him or not, did have a base. The, the thing is that people who hated him and loved him followed him. That's the difference. It's like, I don't hate Biden. I don't love Biden. I don't follow him on Twitter. Now, if he comes up on my Twitter feed, I'll read the news, but I don't necessarily follow him, his personal account. Now, does he give a shit about me following him? I don't think so, but um, do I give a shit about him giving shit about me not following him? Yeah, I don't give a shit either. So, um, any, anyways, just wanted to make it fun, the last part. But, um, uh, again, Twitter is no fun without Trump. Like him or hate him, he did entertain the Twitter community. I think uh, Twitter is going to have a downtrend. Uh, we can see 52. I want to see if it bounces. But my area to get in, I would consider buying Twitter around $45. If you do have shares, um, I mean, I wouldn't sell it. But... I wouldn't average it down either. I'd probably go about 45. Again, this is me. I'm not telling you to do it. This is me. If I had shares here, I wouldn't just dive in after the first drop. Um, usually, you'll, it'll contain. So here, you know, the earnings, it dropped, and it dropped a little more and got 100. So you hear 100 moving day, the red line right here. Let me zoom in. Do you see this red line here? Saved, okay? Saved, okay? This one went way down under the 100 day. So that's like, I don't know where the 200 day is, but you can just imagine how many times it got saved, saved on 100. A little bit down, broke down a little bit, but cloud top, right? It's above the cloud, saved, saved, saved. So previous, the whole you know year, it was saved either at the cloud top or the if, if the 100 day is below the cloud, it you know hanged around from there and bounced. So here, this time, lost the cloud, lost 100. So we want to, what you could do, or what I could do for you guys is, I know it sounds ridiculous, but if I can get a retracement from the coronavirus lows to the top a couple months ago, you're looking at these levels. Now, again, this is so far out far-fetched, but um, if you do want to buy the value here, uh, and look where it's lining up, this top right here. Um, so $50, okay? So I said 52 in the short term. Let's let's do this. This was actually not the downtrend. So 
what I would do is this. Get a retracement from this low to this top. Okay. Um, and it even lost that. It even lost this. So it's supposed to, it's supposed to have 58 should have hold, but it didn't. Um, if we can pull this retracement to maybe the, the other 100 moving day average, um, at least I think, yeah. I think the technicality is that if you hold it back on the lows of November when they banned um, Trump or the after earnings, I don't know when it was. I think this was the after three earnings ago um, on November that would be the third quarter right so third quarter top bottom to the top on late february you're looking at the 61.8 as 5507 this better hold if it doesn't hold you're looking at 50 then 43. so this is this is a great example i think i'm going to post this chart on monday okay so i think it, where it stopped look at this point on right here exactly so i would say 55 is your limit if it loses you put a tight stop and let it go if it loses it's going to come down to 50 another five bucks okay so that's it thank you for following it's been a long video i did like pause the video and did something else and came back in the middle so it took me like almost two hours three hours to do this whole thing um because of the effort, if you do like it, just gives me a give me a thumbs up and you know follow us, subscribe. Um, I don't want anything else. I don't you know I don't really do any kind of and I don't believe it. I, I don't believe in doing any type of financial service. Um, I'm doing this for free and I'm doing this for pleasure. So if you do request and the videos are late a little bit a day or so, um, just consider the fact that I'm doing this for you know just my own personal pleasure and. Uh, it's my hobby, so things can delay a little bit or something. My schedule can change, but that's the thing about you know getting things free. <laughs> it's all it's all on my uh, you know it's all on my mercy of being available at that time and that certain schedule, which I try to follow it religiously for everybody that's waiting for the video. Um, again, uh, if you give us like and subscribe, we'll be really happy. Um, thank you so much, and we'll see you guys next Friday.